I spend hundreds of hours here at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco looking at the art, but my favorite art of all is the art that appears in our stained glass windows. We have so many different saints from generations and generations, and it's such a joy for me to look up at them and to think about what their lives were like and what our lives are like too. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about St. Polycarp. He was a second century saint who was martyred. Uh, he was a student of John the Apostle, who was a student of Jesus. So he was one generation separated from Jesus' own teachings. And he was also the teacher for Irenaeus, one of the most important teachers of the early Christian church. Now, martyrdom, the word martyr in Greek mean, is martureo, and it means to bear witness. It means that you have something in you, and you're showing that to the world. Something in you is from God, and you are sharing that with other people. Now, in the ancient world, uh, the Roman Empire didn't recognize a differentiation between church and state, and so they required all loyal Roman citizens to burn incense to the emperor, who they treated as a kind of god. And so Christians were regarded as political subversives for refusing to burn that incense. And the reason they did that was because they believed that there's only one God and we should not be worshiping false gods, including the false God that is the emperor. And I'm sure that many Christians just burned the incense and, 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 and got off easy. But there were many famous Christians who refused to do that and they were put to death by the Roman Empire. Polycarp was one of those people. He was hiding at a farmhouse. He heard that the, uh, the people were coming to arrest him. He went to another farmhouse. When he heard that they were coming to arrest him there, he, he decided not to flee. And when, he got, when they got there to arrest him, he had an enormous banquet prepared for his persecutors. And he said, please, let me pray. And for two hours, he stood and prayed for every person he had ever encountered in his entire life. The people who were arresting him were very impressed by this but he was put to de death. There are many other martyrs too. Martyrs like Felicity and Perpetua. Perpetua was a 22-year-old young woman. She was a noble woman. She was well-educated. She wrote an account that we can still read today. We can find out what it was like for her almost up until her death. She writes about how her parents in particular, her husband, all the people around her were just begging her just to burn the incense to the emperor, just to do that simple thing so that she would be spared. She was nursing a little baby and it was so heartrending for her to give that baby up for the final time. And she, um, the Roman government at the time, um, basically had her, her torn apart by wild animals. It was a horrible way to die. But Christians didn't do this just out of a sense of obedience. They didn't do this just to not conform with the, the edicts of the Roman Empire. Um, in many ways, they did it because they felt a profound connection between themselves and Jesus who had suffered in a similar way. In other words, there was a kind of mystical response, a kind of joy that they felt in this act that was their calling. This week, I was visiting with the girls' choir. It's our first girls' choir that we've ever formed. And it was such a joy to see these 10 girls kind of shifting in their, in their, in their feet, uh, feeling a little bit awkward. And yet, I could see it in their eyes that they knew that there is a light inside of them and that that light needs to be shared in the world. Irenaeus, who was Polycarp's student, said that the human being is the glory, the, the, the human being who is fully alive is the glory of God. So God's glory comes in part from our thriving and showing what is within us. Now there's so many different obstacles, I know, for you in, in, in thriving. Uh, there's so many challenges and irritations. Um, there's so many demands on you. There's so many distractions. And there's even the presence of evil too, which obstructs us and, and keeps us from being what we need to be. But my prayer is that like those martyrs, you find a way to bear witness to that light that's in your heart, that's in your life. My prayer is that your life will be a witness to God. My name is Malcolm Clemens Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral here in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching. More good news.